Good morning, C3 mm -hmm. Toronto. Welcome. It's Pastor Sam and Jess here. It's so awesome that you're here tuning in mm -hmm. right off the back of, of reunion. reunion. <laughs> oh, it was so great. Right? What a great two days we got to have together in Ajax. Yes. It was so much fun Man. seeing everybody and hearing great words and being right. in the presence of God together. It was Getting unified around the vision yes. and there's fresh excitement, fresh mm -hmm. unity. Man, the family is back together, yeah. getting geared up yeah. for what's to come. Right. And that's exciting. And mm -hmm. to, to stay in tune with everything that our church is doing, you have to uh, fill out a Connect card. We want right. you to stay connected with the life of the church. And so totally. the link's coming up in the mm -hmm. comments section uh, because there's lots going on. Yeah, you want to fill that out and then we can make sure that any information and details get to you so you know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. one of the big things that is happening right. right now is at the beginning of November, likely November 7th, mm -hmm. is we We're are going to be moving back it to in-person services mm -hmm. on Sunday. Yay. So we're going to close out the James series online like the mm -hmm. way we're doing it in watch parties. Shout out to all the watch parties. But November 7th, we are going to a Sunday afternoon yes. service. It's going to be so good. Yeah, with all these changes and everything going mm -hmm. on with uh, the COVID protocols and everything, we've right. got lots to iron out. But that it's is happening. coming. It is happening. It's coming now. Yes. And so <laughs> November 7th, Yes, stay and one tuned. thing I want to say about that More as information well to come. is that that means that C3 Kids is actually coming back exactly. as well. So all the families. All of the kids were uh, in C3 Kids at Reunion and they just had the best time and they were so glad that it was back. So it's going to be back in force party, every party. Sunday. So families get ready for that. Amen. So... That is a little bit vague, of course, we know that, but we want you to start to prepare. We want right. you to start to... Keep you in the loop. Yeah, and making sure that it's going to be prioritising mm -hmm. what's coming up. So let's get into worship now. Let's continue this awesome service and uh, we'll worship together. It's so awesome mm -hmm. that you're here.
Amazing. Come on. Isn't it awesome to worship together, church? Uh, I hope that you're really enjoying that and just uh, praising God. And it was so amazing over reunion to be able to be together worshiping. We had uh, incredible worship, just really soaking in the Holy Spirit, just believing with one another, lifting our eyes to Jesus and uh, just going through the songs and being in church in person together again, man, it really does make you appreciate the power of worship, the power of the community coming together. And uh, the reason I say that is because we are very excited about uh, doing that every Sunday now. Uh, coming, coming up in the next few weeks, uh, we will be um, sending out information and we'll be able to be in Sundays together. And if you're watching and you missed out on reunion, it's all good. There will be some highlights coming out in the next few weeks. And uh, we might, we, we're still talking about it. We might make some of the moments uh, accessible online for us to watch back. And, and, uh, but really, the spirit of the house is uh, an incredible thing. Just what God does through the life of the church, coming together, the family of God, believing before God for what He is doing uh, throughout the city of Toronto is so important. That's what it was all about. And uh, we've got to give in to that. We've got to be believing in faith in that. And we bring our finances uh, to be able to resource what God is doing through the church, to be able to reach people that aren't in the body of Christ that aren't in the faith. And so the different ways to give are coming up right now on the screen. And you can always go to our website and contribute financially, contribute to what's going on. And it's not so much about contributing to the work of the church. It's more about trusting God and placing faith in God. And, and, and the Word says is that we, when we trust in Him and, and we don't lean on our own ways of thinking, our own sort of intelligence, or even our own uh, strength and our finances can represent trusting in our own strength. When we trust in Him, uh, that we really do see like an open heaven over our lives. We see God move in unique ways. And, and it's always a trust exchange. It's always a faith exchange. And I want to challenge you that if you have found yourself, you know, uh, questioning whether you can trust God, the next step that we need to make is to step out in faith. The next step is to, is to move in faith, step out in faith, trust Him again, and take the thing that holds a lot of our trust finances and place it in God's hands and watch God move. Watch God move over your life. Watch God move through your life in impacting other people. And so um, that's what it's all about. And we are just very excited about what God is doing in the church. I'm coming off the back of reunion just filled with so much faith. Uh, just looking across the room and seeing the team come together and, and, and the family of C3 Toronto just uh, praying over one another, seeing people like just... Uh, you know, really building relationship and being in community again. And you could see that people's souls were just being filled and refreshed through those moments, seeing people serving and giving and, uh, and contributing to something that's bigger than themselves. You could just see the life of Christ coming into people's lives again. And, and just seeing that, man, the church, there is nothing like the local church on the planet. And so I'm just filled with so much gratitude today. Uh, I'm, I'm, 
I'm tired and fatigued as much of the team is coming off the back of reunion, but just filled with immense amount of gratitude. And, and, and that is because we're, we have a generous house. That's because we're a generous church. And so um, thank you for continuing to be generous. And I just want to pray with everybody that's giving as we continue this service. Lord God, we just thank you so much for the body of Christ. We thank you that this is your idea, it's your design. And when we align with your design, I just thank you that uh, it's, there's so much blessing in it, there's so much fruitfulness in it, and we're just so thankful for it. And so, Lord God, I just pray for everybody out there that is yet to experience being in person, uh, yet in church. And I thank you that as, as they uh, come in person, that they too would feel that reminder of how amazing it is to be in the family of believers. And Lord God, for everybody that's giving, Father, I just pray for them, pray for a return blessing on their life. And Lord God, uh, we just give you all the glory as we always do. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So that's awesome. We have Pastor Mark Kelsey doing the fourth installment, uh, James chapter four of the James series. Uh, we, we've been in a series uh, for the last four weeks. It's a series that has been packaged together, put together by the C3 Global team. And it's been absolutely outstanding. If you haven't checked out the messages, go back, very practical messages on the book of James. The book of James, as Pastor Phil said last week, is kind of like the New Testament Proverbs. And there's just so many golden nuggets in there that the team are pulling out. And so Pastor Mark Kelsey has been in C3 Church uh, for pretty much the entire time that C3 has existed uh, for nearly 40 years. And, uh, and he's spoken in our church a number of times and every time he does, just such an amazing gift of preaching and teaching and bringing the Word to life in a practical way. And I know that it's really going to bless you today. But before we hear from Pastor Mark Kelsey, we have one, uh, one of our amazing stories. We always play stories to build faith in the life of our church. And so this is Leona, and she is a beautiful woman in our house that's been in our church for many years. And, uh, and her story is going to really encourage you. Uh, so let's watch that right now. My name is Leona, and I'm from Saskatchewan. I'm from White Bear First Nation, Saskatchewan. And I have, I'm a single mom of six kids. Well, we lived in an older house that had no running water. We lived off the land mostly. My mother and my father tried to run away from the residential schools, but they were caught to cut off their hair, they had to shave their heads, they had to wear all the same clothes, they weren't fed properly, so from then on, you know, it affected them. They got into alcoholism to numb the trauma. As a child, I got addicted to alcohol as well. I, you know, experimented with, you know, uh, drugs, and then I lost my way. I just didn't know where, where I was going, you know. So I left the reserve at the age 20, 22. Um, my sister and I were looking for a church. We weren't really sure where we belonged. And we kept seeing this banner, C3 Toronto, on the gate of the school. It was so different, you know, from what I'm used to. There was, I felt so much freedom. Um, when I started the Freedom Group study, I didn't have no idea how to be free. As I went through the series of studies in the, in the Freedom Group, I started to realize uh, what was keeping me captive. My past, my past, my history. Uh, my generational history of bitterness and anger, all kinds of sin, you know. And so as I went through the freedom study, I realized, you know, that Jesus has been calling me, you know, the whole time, and he's trying to set me free from everything. That one night I recall when we were confessing our sin, talking, you know, getting released from everything. 
I saw chains being broken. And there was a sword, a big sword with fire breaking these chains. I felt free, I wanted to cry, like I never felt like this before in my whole life. You know, God had plans for me to come and be in Toronto C3 Church, because it's brought me so much freedom. It's brought me through so much, it brought me out of myself. It helped me to, like, the people have prayed for me, and I can't regret, you know, being here. Hey, C3 family, wonderful to see you. Uh, my name is Mark Kelsey, and today we have got this, doing this message together on the book of James, and we're going to focus in on James chapter 4, verse 13 to 5, 12. And really, uh, the book of James has so much great content and incredible wisdom to us, and we really are focusing in on this whole issue of wisdom. Uh, and James contrasts through, uh, through his book on the difference between heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom. And boy, if we need anything in this current day, in what's happening in our world, a world filled with tension, conflict, polarized ideology, uncertainty, we need wisdom. And thank God that the Word of God provides that for us. In fact, James says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask for it. Ask God for it. Not sure about you, but there are many times I've lacked wisdom and many, many times I've asked for wisdom. In fact, one of the key pieces of wisdom I had, first pieces of wisdom I had was I didn't have any wisdom and I needed to ask God for it. In fact, probably one of the most regular prayers in my life is God, give me wisdom. And so we're going to dive deep into this particular passage of Scripture today, and hopefully this will be of value and help you, particularly in this area. It's interesting. Wisdom is a central part of our understanding of the gospel. Paul talks about in Ephesians 1.17, and he's talking to the Ephesian church, of course. He says, I keep asking, and I love that, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And that we can actually receive a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation so that we understand God better. We understand the word better. What a powerful thing that is, that it's not just on a natural level, but on a spiritual level and a supernatural level, God can give us that spirit. And boy, we need that. You know, James essentially wants the church, I believe, as we unpackage the book of James, to be living what he calls true religion. We'll read, we read that in James 1.27. And I believe that James breaks up what true religion is throughout the scriptures there uh, in James 1.22 to 23. He says, we are to be hearers and doers of the word. Not just hearers, but also doers of the word. And later on in James 2, he says, we should exercise faith and works. And I love this combination that, that James gives us. Hearers and doers, faith and works. The combination of those two things, I believe, helps us live out true religion. Religion that is not, uh, isn't hypocrisy. Religion that is not double standard, but religion that actually is spiritual and natural. That is a connection with God, but also a value to the world we live in, which is great. Okay, so today, this passage we're going to cover three areas of wisdom that are applicable in our lives. Number one, how to prioritize God's will. Number two, understanding the responsibility of wealth. And thirdly, learning to patiently endure. Boy, that's a challenge. Okay, so we're going to go through these one by one. The first one, prioritizing God's will. And we read about this in James 4, verse 13 to 17. Let me read it for you today. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we'll go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? 
you're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Wow. <laughs> Once again, here we see James is a straight shooter. So here he's talking about this whole concept that really is about prioritizing what God wants for our lives. Right from verse 13, he says, Now listen, I believe this is definitely a season in which we should be doing more listening than speaking. Uh, in fact, he talks about that in James 1.19, be quick to listen, be quick to listen, slow to speak. And so I think that combination is very, very relevant for today. And of course, if we're quick to listen, then we're, we are less presumptuous regarding God's will for our lives. And in verse 14, all, all, what he's saying there is ultimately, we really don't know what's going to happen to us for our lives. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the day after. We may guess or think or, or anticipate what it is, but ultimately what we need to do is trust that God's will will come to pass and we give our lives into, into his heart and plans for that. In fact, in Proverbs 16, 13, it talks about that. Basically, submit your plan, submit your steps to God and he will ultimately direct our path. So the question we probably should be asking at James' inspiration is this, what do you want, Lord, for my life, for my marriage, for my family, for my business? Giving it to him, committing it to him is really the encouragement that James is giving us. Wow, such a contrast to the current worldview because current worldview is more like a me philosophy, which is self-focused, individualistic and consumer-based. Whereas the biblical philosophy or the biblical worldview is quite different. Others focused, community, con being a contributor. And so as we, as we commit our life to God and prioritize his will, then we are really living out a biblical worldview or a biblical philosophy, which I believe helps anyone and people that we live around. So James's basic, simple conclusion in this little passage is James 1.17. Basically, know the good, know the good to do, and just go and do it. If you know what is right, if you know the good, just go and do it. Simple. I love it, which is great. Okay. So that's prioritizing God's will. Commit your way. Commit your plans. Commit all the things that you may think will happen or you'd like to see happen. Say, God, whatever you want, I submit it to you, and then he will guide and direct your paths, which is great. Okay, number two. Wow, understanding the responsibility of wealth. Let me read this passage to you. It's James 5, first six verses. It says here, Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Wow. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who is not opposing you. My gosh, he doesn't mince words here at all. James really, in many ways, his life was a mission to correct the ungodly attitudes of the wealthy. In fact, ultimately, in the end of his days, the high priest got him martyred because of his stance in this, in this area. So he, he certainly took it seriously. And look, this is a very, very strong piece of scripture. But first of all, let me say this, this passage is not criticizing wealth. God has no problem with wealth. It is addressing the bigger issues that wealth sometimes can bring, which are these greed, corruption, disregard for the poor and injustice. Jesus addressed the very same issues and kingdom attitude to money in Matthew 6 verses 19 to 21 and talks about similar things. My conviction is this, as I read James, and, and meditate on that and read that passage in Matthew 6. 
that money is meant to move. It's not meant to be stationary and corrode and rot and rust. Money has purpose. Money is meant to move. Well, where is it meant to move? I believe money is meant to move in three directions. Number one, to whom it is owed. And James talks about this. In other words, to the workers. If money is owed to someone, it's meant to move to them. And of course, this is integrity. Super important. The second direction is money is meant to move to the poor. Socially, politically, financially disadvantaged people, money is meant to move to the poor. And this is justice. And the third area and third direction that money is meant to move to is money is meant to move to the vision. So kingdom expansion can happen, and this is generosity. So money is meant to express integrity, justice, and I believe generosity. It's interesting that in these days, the wealthy people that James was talking to, they were the oppressors and and workers would do work for them and they wouldn't pay them. Well, back then... You pity all, other than the wealthy, the, the, the rest of society would work a day's wages and that money they would take and go and, and buy food for that day. And if they were, weren't given uh, money for, what they were, for the work they did that day, they would starve or go hungry. And so these were very, very real issues uh, that were applicable in that time. John Mark Comer uh, challenges the readers of one of his great books basically to live simply and to live generously. I love that. To live simply and to live generously. Because unjust wealth, James says, hoards, is self-indulgent and causes destruction. And I believe as New Testament believers, that we need to understand the value of wealth in its kingdom perspective and to use it for good, for God and for great things. And uh, what a great encouragement, as straight as that is from James. It is awesome. Okay, the third thing that I believe James unpackages in in this passage of scripture is this, learning to patiently endure. Probably one of the greatest challenges of the human soul is endurance, particularly endurance with patience. And he, I believe he covers two main areas in the, particularly in the area of the context that he's talking about is that patience towards God, which we're going to talk about in a minute and patience towards one another. But first, let me read this passage that he uses to talk about this subject. Okay, verse 7 of James chapter 5. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. That's quite a while. (laughs) In other words, that's to the end of our lives. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because of the Lord is because the Lord's coming near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. So he's addressing so many areas, but I believe one of the first things he's talking about is that we need to be patient towards God. It's like, it's like there are seasons that God is working with us and for us and in us in our lives. And part of the patience towards God is, Lord, I know this season will change. It will turn from winter to spring. It will turn. The the season may be a a tough season that you're in right now. Trust the Lord and that season uh, will, it will, it will change. It will move forward. And of course, the, the endorsement here and the encouragement here from James is, Trust God and that season will shift. I believe as we grow in faith, we must also grow in trust towards God. If faith represents taking a hold of the things of God, of believing, stepping forward, stepping out, trust represents letting go, submitting, waiting patiently for the Lord. And it's this tension, if you like, between faith and and trust, and we've heard many great messages and endorsements and encouragements about faith, which we need to keep hearing. But we also, I believe, need to hear messages on trust because there are times, uh, so there are times to grab a hold of something and there are times to let go. I love the scripture in Psalm 106, verse 13. But they soon forgot what he had done. In other words, the faithfulness of God in the past. 
and did not wait for his plan to unfold. God has a plan. He has a good plan. He has a great plan for you. But it takes patient endurance to see that plan unfold. A handful of years ago, uh, I was diagnosed with uh, 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 cancer. It was a serious form of cancer. And it was one of those things that I did not receive a quick or instant miracle. It has sub subsequently been resolved and I no longer have cancer, cancer in my body, praise God. But there were quite a long time in which the, the workings of God, obviously I was working with doctors, I, was, I had surgery, there were things happening and I, I exercised my faith, but I found myself also needing to exercise trust in God as I patiently waited for his, for his goodness, for his plan to outwork in my life. Uh, and I believe that actually caused me to grow uh, in my faith, grow in my, my patience and grow in my character before God. So here we see again, once again, this tension between faith and trust. The second type of patient endurance, I believe, is patient, patience towards one another. In many ways, this may be more challenging or just as challenging as our patience towards God. But what does this mean? What is patience towards one another? Well, in spite of differences, conflicts, opinions, and even injustice, we need to exercise patience towards one another, particularly within the church. We are brothers and sisters but within that family of God, united under the one God, the one Messiah, in a new family. The book of Ephesians says we are one new humanity. Under that new family, we're brothers and sisters with these differences. And, and, and we are called to be patient with one another uh, within those differences. The New Testament exhortations in this arena are very, very clear. I'll give you many scriptures, but just going to quote you one. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. God wants our lives to, be the, to build one another up. It's interesting that right now, uh, I believe the keyboard on our computers has become the new tongue. It has become the thing that, that expresses and, and engages with one another. And, 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 and earlier on in the book of James, he talks about the tongue as this unwieldy, force that can bring life and death that can cause damage and in many ways the keyboard has become that new form uh, of tongue that has causes damage and cuts people and causes harm and brings division etc social media if used inappropriately has actually reinforced division and tribalism i believe there's a huge benefit to social media by the way but it's when it's used inappropriately uh, that it causes damage because uh, here's the thing we are called and meant to build peace. As believers, that's what we're called to do. We receive grace, but we're meant to build peace with one another. We receive grace from God, but the calling is actually to build peace with one another so that that peace exists within God's community. But how do we do that? What are some of the things? Well, I believe we need to understand the difference and the combination and the power of both unity and diversity because the combination of unity and diversity within the body of Christ, that equals community. And God wants a healthy and functioning community living in the world so that it actually impacts the world for Christ. Because unity without diversity, without the acceptance of difference by itself actually is just uniformity. God doesn't want uniformity. It's not, unity is not sameness. Similarly, diversity without unity is just individualism. It's just difference. But the combination of unity plus diversity equals this great thing called community, and we do this together. So I believe we need unity on the core basics, but diversity of gifting and preference, and that's okay. I heard a recent podcast with T.D. With Jakes, a great man of God in our current world. And he says this, that we actually do need healthy and vigorous conversation. However, 
that conversation should be both thoughtful and compelling, not loud and irritating. Thoughtful and compelling, not loud and irritating. And so, if we, and we need healthy engagement, healthy, vigorous conversation in order to understand our differences and to work through some of these issues that we're currently facing. So here's a couple of, just a few tips, I believe, on how to, to patiently endure and how to continue to work with one another and understand one another. Number, number one, I believe we need to listen. I mentioned it before. I believe this is a season where our level of listening needs to be higher than it ever has before. Listen. Number two, to seek to understand. To seek to understand. I believe that's by asking questions. I believe that's by going, what, what, is, what are you actually saying? And we listened and understood. And the third thing is to first find agreement on the, base, on the basics, to discover what is foundational orthodoxy. What is it that we all believe? What are the basics of the gospel? Let's find agreement. The rest is just up for grabs. The rest is preference. But once we agree on the basics, then we can understand what unites us as God's divine family on the earth. So hopefully uh, these thoughts and encouragements from the book of James help today. Uh, and I just believe that we can live in greater wisdom as we seek it, in greater wisdom as we desire it, and as we really try to grow in this area of growing in God's heavenly wisdom. So wonderful being with you today. God bless you. And let's just pray together as we finish in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for everyone listening today that the presence of God, that the Spirit of God would fall on them. And God, that your comfort, strength, that your grace and mercy and your great anointing would travel through this screen into every listener. And I pray, God, that your presence would bring that great peace in Jesus' name. God, I declare in, the, in a world right now that is full of turmoil, that internally we would discover your peace and your presence. And we would outlive that with wisdom and grace into our relationships, into our church community, and within the community we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. So wonderful being with you today. Amen. Amen. What a great word from Pastor Mark Kelsey. Uh, so good. I love it how he uh, used that moment to talk about faith and trust and how they work hand in hand. And in this season that I, I have been noticing that we need to open up our revelation of God and need to open up our understanding of God to trust Him in a deeper way that we can step out and do things in faith all the way through life. But I have found that there has been a lot more timidity in the last season to kind of uh, uh, shrink back a little bit. And I know that God is calling us to trust Him, to lean in Him uh, again. And part of trusting God is giving your life over to God, surrendering your life over to God. And if you've never made a decision to invite Jesus into your heart, to trust Him with your life, to you aren't meant to place your faith in humanity without God. You're not meant to place your faith in yourself. You're meant to place your faith in God. And that's a trust thing. And if you're watching here and you've, you've watched this message and we're talking through the book of James and a lot of it is about navigating relationships. A lot of it is about practical tools of how to live a life of godliness. Uh, but ultimately the foundation under it all is that we would have relationship with God. And if you're watching this and you don't have relationship with Jesus, you haven't invited Him into your heart, you haven't given your life over to Him, I want to encourage you to do that right now. It's the most important decision that you will ever make. Or maybe you once did make this decision, but you know that in this season of life that you realize that you need to come back to God. You need to retrust Him. You need to give your life over to Him all over again. And you want to recommit your life to Him. Well, you too, uh, we want to pray a prayer with you. We want to do this together. It's a prayer of faith that uh, makes your life right with God. And uh, if that's you, if you want to invite Jesus into your life, either for the first time or you want to recommit your life to Jesus, um, 
we're going to pray this prayer together. It's a simple prayer that I'm going to ask you to repeat after me and we're going to do this together all around the world, wherever you're watching, just repeat this after me. And while we're doing this, I want you, if you're one of those people, I want you to click the I raise my hand button in the comment section and that lets us know that you're one of these people that are praying this prayer. So if that's you, if, if you're like, yes, I want a relationship with Jesus. I haven't done this and I would like to do this or I wanna recommit my life to Jesus. Let's pray together. Say, dear Jesus, I thank you that you died on a cross for me. Forgive me of my sin. Make me new right now and help me follow you as my Lord and my Saviour from this moment on. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise God. That's awesome. I know that there are people that are making this decision and we're just so proud of you. I believe that this is a moment that is changing your life instantly. And we want you to get connected to our church. And so please reach out to us. After the service is finished, we have Post Lobby Vibes. And what that is, is if you click on the link and you go to Post Lobby Vibes, there are people, pastors and, and leaders of our church that are waiting to meet you. Uh, it's basically kind of like a little mini Zoom call and they can pray with you if you need personal prayer for anything that you're going through, get to know you, talk to you. So if you want to stay online, you want to hang out and you want to click that link and, and talk about uh, life, church life, things you're going through, prayer or anything, uh, they're there to help you get to know uh, how to get involved in connect groups and get to know about the different things of what's going on around church. Please go to Post Lobby Vibes. But before we get there, one of our, we always save the best till last and one of our favorite parts of the service is C3 Kids. So families, kids, get ready. Let's uh, check out Rocco and Friends. Following programming contains scientific experiments that should not be attempted at home without adult supervision. Stay safe, see the kids. Okay, so the last instruction here says I have to bake a soda and add it to this mixture. Wait, what? Hey, Rocco! Oh, hey, Mike. Oh, yeah, Sierra told me you were working on an experiment for our series filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I was just wrapping it up, but it looks like I need to bake a soda and add it to this mixture. <laughs> as exciting as that would be, why don't we just add baking soda to the mixture. Is this the right amount? Oh yeah, that would make sense. Okay, here goes nothing. Whoa! And I didn't get any on me. Okay, Rocco, as cool as that was, I don't think that was supposed to happen. Did you measure this correctly? Uh, well, I might have gone a little heavy on the vinegar. Well, didn't go so well for the science experiment. At least we can be glad that the Holy Spirit can't be measured. Wait, what do you mean can't be measured? I mean, God's gifts and grace are beyond any scale and measure. It's like it says in John 3, 34. God gives the Spirit without limit. That means we can tap into the Holy Spirit more and more anytime we want to. Wait, Mike, are you telling me that I can't ever get enough of the Holy Spirit? Not even if you tried. The more you open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit in, the more we're filled with what we need to follow Jesus and to bear good fruit. Hey, what do you have against double cores? They can't all be good fruit. It always comes back to apple course, doesn't it? But you get what I'm saying, right? The Holy Spirit is alive, and it's the gift that keeps on giving because it can't be measured. Well, I see what you're saying, Mike, and I know that I receive the Holy Spirit when I accept Jesus in my heart. I guess I was just wondering, how can I keep getting more? Well, that's easy. Just need to pray every day and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up. Well, that's it? Well, can we pray right now? Absolutely. Dear Jesus, Thank you for being our Lord and Savior, and thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that the Spirit is a gift that lives in my heart. I want to be filled with the Spirit to overflow. Yes, Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, Mike, I love that things can't ever be measured, like God's love for us and the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wise words from a wise of our crew. So... Should we clean up the science as a sign of good measure? Oh, no, Mike, we're just getting started. Okay, well, at least time we say goodbye to the kids. Okay, we'll see you next time, kids. Bye. Bye. Hi, kids. It's memory verse time. So let's stand on up and shake it out 
and repeat after me. Today's verse is coming from Ephesians 1.13, part B. Ephesians 1.13, B. When you believed, when, when you, you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal. You were marked in Him with a seal. The promised Holy Spirit. The promised Holy Spirit. You guys, you rocked it. That deserves a round of applause. Oh, and hey, see through kids, if you guys have ever thought about getting baptized, that is amazing. And we're so excited that you're taking this next step in your walk with Jesus. So why don't you guys talk with your parents and then head on over to the See Through Kids page on our website. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, bye.